AADC. What is your position on hydraulic fracture? <laughs> I hope that this water wasn't created by it. <laughs> and it, at a minimum, needs to be under the Safe Drinking Water Act. And I specifically want to say thank you to Karen for helping to educate, on, educate me on this. I've been at, at two of the events um, that you helped to put together. They were outstanding events. Um, and two things I came away with is, first of all, the industry is probably hyping the amount of wealth that's under the ground. What's troubling about that is these places could go bankrupt and not have any assets to be able to clean up even what legitimate messes we can say they created. So that's my, my first concern. But the second would be the Halliburton loophole. And there is, in Congress, um, legislation to um, put fracking under the Safe Water Act and to force companies to reveal the chemicals that they're shoving into the earth that are then coming back up, that are releasing methane all over the place. Um, and I don't see how it's not going to spoil our drinking water. The other issue with this, too, is these wells are not just the risk now, they're a permanent risk. Because as the concrete encasement around the wells gradually deteriorates, we're going to have more methane coming up. And so this is a problem that is starting today, but we're going to, and we, we've had these environmental problems with coal in Pennsylvania. This is a similar one. It's got to stop. I think if, safe, if it was under the Safe Drinking Water Act, it would stop. And I'm very, very concerned about it. Because once our water is poisoned, it's gone. Uh, I just want to uh, extend my appreciation to Karen for her work with the first gas, gas proof. And I have often compared hydraulic fracturing to my uh, work uh, for the President's Oil Spill Commission. Uh, we were investigating uh, the largest oil spill in American history, which was the result, essentially, uh, of a new technology. Uh, we've been drilling offshore for years, but never at the depths uh, that the Deepwater Horizon was drilling at. And uh, what you had there was essentially a case where the technology uh, uh, you know, went beyond the best practices uh, of the industry uh, and went beyond the ability of the government to regulate it. And it hadn't yet caught up uh, with the technology. And you saw what happened. We had one of the biggest environmental catastrophes of the generation. And my fear is that hydraulic fracturing is the same thing. It's a very new technology that we are rushing to exploit industries, rushing to use it before it's fully developed, best practices uh, for its use, uh, and before uh, the government has figured out the best way uh, to regulate it. Uh, and we've already seen cases w where there's accidents where people's drinking waters, uh, drinking water here in Pennsylvania has been contaminated. Uh, and as Rick said, uh, there are clearly ways uh, uh, that we can better regulate this. Number one is eliminate the Halliburton loophole. There is no reason that companies should keep it a secret what, what chemicals they're using uh, that are going into, the, into these wells and that if the wells uh, lose their integrity, we'll, we'll go into uh, a drinking water aquifers. Uh, and that is a, a loophole that Congressman Dent supported. Somebody needs to call, on, uh, call uh, to the floor on that. So uh, that's, how, that's how I feel uh, on this. This is a wide open question, but I like it, so I'm going to read it. <laughs> Describe your democratic roots. Uh, well, as many people know, I, I am uh, a, a recent Democrat. And I was very straightforward about this when I, uh, when I made my announcement. I said that uh, I didn't leave the Republican Party, and that the Republican Party left me. Uh, now, as, I, as, as I've said, uh, I, I, I grew up in a Republican family. Uh, as my father would say, I've been, uh, I've been straying from the path. <laughs> uh, I, worked for, uh, I worked for Senator uh, Rockefeller, a Democrat from West Virginia. I worked for the President's Oil Spill Commission. Uh, I, tell people, uh, I tell people all the time, when I was, when I was in the Army uh, in, uh, in 2000, that was the first time that I voted for uh, Al Gore, a Democratic presidential uh, uh, nominee, who I've been, I've been voting for the Democratic nominee since then. And that was not exactly popular back in the service uh, uh, to, be voting, to be voting Democratic. And when my fellow officers found out uh, that I voted for Gore, platoon leaders you know, all have a call sign. One is 
one is green one, one is blue one, well, my call sign became pinko one. <laughs> so I've taken, I've taken some arrows for some Democrats, uh, even though uh, my registration had changed uh, recently. Well, I don't know. I think in my heart I've always been a Democrat. I'm, I'm a social worker. Um, I think when I got to college, I, I registered initially as an independent and then very quickly switched to Democrat as I was looking to see what party fit what my beliefs were. And I've never looked back. I mean, this is where I belong. Um, when we have Democratic meetings, I love the people I'm with. Um, I like what we fight for and what we believe in. Uh, I, I am perplexed uh, by the Republicans. Um, and saddened in many respects by what I see their focus on things, and their focus begins with money um, over and over again, and it's, it's been part of their history going back a long time. When I worked at the Shelter for Homeless Families, and I mentioned this before, um, in Bethlehem, the Republican Party uh, fired their traffic controllers. Republicans cheered it. They're, they still cheer it today. I think it was terrible. Republicans said that the ketchup was a vegetable in our school lunch program. <laughs> It's, it's funny, but it's horrible when you think about it. I know, I, I laugh too at that, but, and the Republicans said homeless people were lazy, and that's why they were homeless. They said they clear-cut forests, they said they drill everywhere, and it, in my heart, I could never belong to the Republican Party. Um, now, in terms of uh, my credentials, I, I was the district administrator for Congressman Paul McHale, who was the last Democrat to, um, to have this district. I'm chairman of the Democratic Party in Lehigh County. I'm serving my second term. I've got the stripes to show it. Before that, I was treasurer for two terms. Two terms, and I've worked. For, I worked on Archie's campaign when he ran for state rep. Um, I've worked on a lot of campaigns as a foot soldier. But really, my heart is in the Democratic Party. It's where I belong. It's where I'm comfortable, and it's it's where I meet my friends. This is a question you probably haven't faced before, and it's one that's it's my question. I'm going to use my prerogative to mm -hmm. ask one question tonight. Uh, if you've recently uh, gotten a credit card, if you've recently gotten a new job, if you've recently signed a car loan, uh, a lease for uh, an apartment, you've signed uh, an agreement that includes a clause for mandatory, mandatory arbitration. It's removing the ability for Americans to sue for damages uh, in courts. Uh, do you support that? Uh, do you, do you support legislation that would uh, make it illegal for corporations and others to force you into mandatory arbitration? Oh, my you know. I mean, <laughs> Democrats, again, getting back to the Democratic question, we fight for people. And, and those, are, those are corporate tricks to cut us out of our basic rights. And if the Democratic Party stands for anything, it's fighting for just regular people like us. It's fighting to protect our environment. It's fighting so we don't get screwed over by corporations. It's, it's fighting so that we have a fair shot at wages, so we can organize, so that even though we don't own the factory, when we help it prosper, we get our fair share. And so that is just a classic example of, of corporate power and it's exactly why we need a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. And that's the Democratic Party, in my view, to fight back. Otherwise, we'll be crushed. Uh, I, I don't know whether I would support a blanket ban on, on mandatory, mandatory arbitration. I, I guess I would be really curious to see where the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau uh, came out on this. This is a, a bureau that I support. Uh, I would be very interested in if it supported uh, uh, banning clauses like that. I, I, would be, I would be very interested in it. I think that would make me more like that. It's just an issue I, I haven't learned too much about. Um, but I think what's important is that we have an institution like the CFPB that is out there protecting consumers, uh, whether it is that particular issue, whether it's making clear when you're uh, getting a mortgage, when you're getting a loan, what exactly uh, that you're signing. And unfortunately, the Republicans uh, in Congress have decided, uh, not only are they, they against it after they lost uh, uh, the actual battle to set up the CFPB, uh, but now they're refusing uh, uh, to allow the president to nominate a director. Uh, in many ways, this is an unprecedented uh, attempt where they're not fighting somebody uh, on the basis of their qualifications, but simply because they don't like the law that created the agency that he would be heading. Uh, and Congressman Dent is somebody that opposed the CFPB and somebody who 
uh, uh, opposed uh, uh, Dodd Frank. And so uh, I think that's one thing that this campaign has got to focus on is that Congressman Dent has been on the wrong side of consumers uh, on issues like this. We have